Hello. If I knew there was going to be this many people, I would have charged admission. <laughs> Think about that. I'd like to introduce Chuck Nelson, the Deputy Mayor of Aurora. How's that? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. What a crowd, standing room only. Give yourself a hand. This is great. Fantastic. It's a real, uh, certainly this sign, the standing room only sign, I think is a real tribute, not only to the Hicks family, but also to John and Eileen. So God bless all of you for being here today. Well, good morning and welcome to this very special honorary street naming vote uh, dedication ceremony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where today, the city of Aurora is recognizing the Hicks family and honoring the lives and achievements of their late father and mother, John and Eileen Hicks. A special welcome to all our out-of-town guests. And can I get a show of hands who's from out of town? Yeah, there we go. How far? Who came the farthest? Utah. Utah, fantastic. All right, great. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. It's great to see everybody. John and Eileen's legacy is one of family, faith, country, and music. And I was told that together, John and Eileen produced the most beautiful music ever. On behalf of Mayor Irvin, our city council, and over 200,000 Aurorans, thank you to the Hicks family for providing the music for all these years and years to come. So it is an honor for me again to be here. It is an honor for me to present our next speaker, uh, the Alderman of the 10th Ward, Alderman Judd Lofchie. Alderman Lofchie. Can you do this? Do that around? That's fine. It's a little high. Chuck's, Chuck's a little taller than I am. Let's see. All right. Welcome. Thank you all for having me. Um, very excited and honored to be here. Um, as it turns out, I've lived in the 10th Ward, this area, for 20 years, and I know the business has been here 20 years. And as it turns out, uh, when my son uh, got old enough, when he was, say, maybe 10, he took guitar lessons here. And he took them for years, and he learned some great, uh, great guitar, great electric guitar, and he, he got to play uh, Smoke on the Water for his school. <laughs> and he played it over and over and over. <laughs> But it, but it was really great. And then uh, the Rock U at the Roundhouse, year after year we would go there and he would all of a sudden become in a band and he's throwing his pick out in the audience like he's a rock star. It was really a fabulous experience for him and, and for us as his parent to have those memories and those photos. And he took guitar lessons um, from Marco here for years and I understand Marco's still here. So um, I speak on behalf of uh, the city council and the mayor. We're really excited that uh, the Hicks has, has opened the business here and stayed in Aurora. Um, I think they grew up here and bought the building. They employ a lot of people, uh, 20 or 20, 25 people. They have 500 people a week coming here, 550 for lessons, which I remember driving by Steak and Shake a million times saying, Dad, we got to stop, right? So it, it, it's really good for the community. And recently I asked Carl if he would invest or uh, uh, go into one of our flyers for the, for the mailing for the ward. And I had never met Carl. Um, and he said, sure, and like signed it and gave me the check in three seconds. I didn't, he didn't have to call the corporate headquarters and all that stuff. So it's great. <laughs> so anyway, we... <laughs> We're really excited to have the, the, the business in the community and uh, look forward to many more years and the ukulele festival is going to be awesome. So anyway, thanks again on behalf of all of Aurora. Mike Seville, the alderman from the uh, sixth ward is going to speak next. Thank you, Judd. Good morning and welcome. I'm going to begin by, by giving you a little history. Uh, back in, and I'm going to date myself, 1965 and 1966, uh, I began taking guitar lessons from John Hicks at the former music shop on Beach and Liberty. 
Uh, that's when I first met John and Eileen, and also I remember uh, John and Peter helping out at the music shop as well. Um, it was interesting because um, what I remember from that experience was being taught two songs, Mich Michelle and, and Eleanor Rigby. I don't remember any other songs but that. <laughs> I was impressed I could finally play some Beatle tunes. Uh, but today I can't play a lick, unfortunately, to my regret. Uh, I stopped practicing, so, you know, teenagers, go figure, right? What are you going to do? Uh, someday, maybe, when I retire, I, I say. So, uh, my next uh, opportunity to interact with the Hicks family was in August of 1986. Uh, there were headlines on the front page of the Beacon, uh, and it was all about my proposal to establish a Riverwalk Commission in downtown Aurora for the purposes of building a Riverwalk. And that very evening, I get a phone call from a, a, a young lady, and we proceeded to talk on the phone for over two and a half hours, and that was Mary Eileen. And we became fast friends. Um, and Mary Eileen and, and Rick were so generous, um, not only with their friendship, but in 1987, I had an event in my ward, and they and their band played for free for me. Uh, and I was very touched. And um, I even have a VH ta VHS tape of that. It's somewhere in the house. I could find it if I look for it, but I know it's there. Um, when my mom passed away in 2003, I immediately called Mayor Eileen and asked if she would um, perform and sing at my mom's service. And, and again, um, she was so gracious, um, she said yes. And her and her friend came and, and performed wonderfully. Uh, and something that um, uh, my family will always uh, remember. Um, so fast forward now um, to the end of April. Uh, I've had this idea for a few years about having a ukulele festival in downtown Aurora. Uh, so I called my friend Todd Von Ola and said, Todd, what do you think? And he thought it was a great idea. He says, let me contact uh, Carl and, on, uh, and Andrew, and we'll set up a meeting, which we did. So the very next week, we set up a meeting, and, and I pitched my idea uh, uh, in greater detail to Todd and, and Carl and Andrew, and, and to their credit, they loved the idea. So then they reached out to their sphere of influence, and we've been meeting every, uh, every week um, since May, and some of the committee is here as well, uh, besides Todd, Mark is here, and Melanie, and... and uh, um, who am I missing? Joyce, yeah, Joyce. Uh, and uh, we have this great event coming up um, uh, this Sunday. Um, and it's going to be great. Um, so about two weeks into this process, when we started meeting in May, I get, a, I get contacted by Eric. And Eric uh, says, you know, I have this really great idea to honor you know, my father, John. Uh, would the city consider doing it a street dedication? And I thought that was a great idea um, because of my history with the, the Hicks family. And, and um, so I contacted the city and have been working with the deputy mayor, um, uh, Chuck Nelson, uh, to try to get this done. Uh, the mayor, Irvin, agreed to it. Uh, and uh, uh, Chuck Nelson called me and, and I called Eric and, and uh, told him uh, that the city has agreed to do that. And I says, you know, Eric, I says, uh, it should really be a partner, partnership because uh, John and Eileen couldn't do anything without together, uh, without uh, working together. Not only did they have ten kids together, um, but they built a music studio together. And um, um, Eric, of course, uh, agreed with the idea uh, that, that um, you know we should honor their partnership. Um, so I think the Hicks family has been a very positive force in our community since the 1940s, literally. Uh, not only um, uh, John and Eileen, but um, the 10 siblings and the grandchildren, and I'm sure the great-grandchildren great as well. And now we have two stores uh, in Aurora that were in here in the course Batavia. Um, and um, what they started still reverberates uh, in the Fox Valley uh, even today. Uh, what John and Eileen started was something special, um, and it's still growing and, and growing. So I want to thank John and Eileen and, this, and the Hicks family, and to all the ten children and the many grandchildren, uh, and their great-grandchildren that have kept the sound of music alive for all of us. Thank you.
morning, everybody. Thanks for coming, all our friends and family, for this dedication today. Um, I'm Andrew Hicks. I'm the baby boy. <clears throat> uh, thanks to uh, Deputy Mayor Chuck Nelson, the alderman, for speaking, and, and uh, Gina Moga's office, uh, special events, for putting this together. And a special thanks again to my brother, Eric. Don't you start crying because, you know, I got to stand here. <clears throat> Great. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> um, it, it was his idea. Actually, it was his idea right after my, my folks passed. He called, I think he called all of us at one point and just said, you know what would be really cool? Blah, blah. I said, That's not going to happen. <laughs> There's lots of people in town that do wonderful things, and why would they do that? But he was persistent, and I really have to say thank you to the city for going along with this idea. It's, it's really an honor to be here. Um, <clears throat> this is where it gets tough. My dad, my dad taught guitar for 50 years. <clears throat> and growing up, I heard the same thing over and over. I took lessons from your dad. 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 Over and over. We heard it always. I still hear it today. In fact, the first time I met Alderman Seville, he said, I took lessons from your dad. <clears throat> so did my sibling. <clears throat> my brother, I think it was. And um, it's really great to hear. And I know, I'm sure, I've never really talked about it with all my siblings, but I bet you've all heard the same thing, right? Your entire life, that dad taught a lot of people in town. Um, and it continues to this day. I hear it all the time. Old school neighborhood peeps, you know, that grew up on the east side especially, we hear that. Um, and it was always a great and positive thing. And it, you don't think about it when you're a kid, but now I realize what an incredible impact my dad had on everybody. And uh, I think that's because he, he you know, he, he loved doing, doing this. He loved it. He never complained. I never hear my father once say, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do this. He just loved, he loved playing. He loved teaching. It was his dream. Uh, during World War II, he actually told his buddies, uh, he probably told other people this too, he told me, he said, uh, when he was overseas, he told his friends, his buddies, that if he ever got out, he was going to open a music store and have a dozen kids. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he got pretty close. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Carl, uh, or Eric here is like three kids <laughs> by himself. So, so that's, that's probably why they gave up. Eric, those are your friends. <laughs> you know what a definition of a friend is, right? It's somebody that knows you but still likes you. <clears throat> so, but he got real close. He had jobs for several years, but he thought, uh, he always taught and he played gigs. He played a lot of gigs, uh, Hawaiian music mostly, although he played what he called Spanish guitar also. And eventually he took the plunge and he opened Hicks Music when there were like nine kids at home. He quit his job and opened a music store, and I always really gave him credit for that alone. And after 50 years, he only quit because his Mac generation made it impossible to work. But during those years, you know, he gave thousands and thousands of lessons, and his students played recitals in nursing homes and at the VFW. I did a bunch of these gigs with him. I know Carl did, Peter did. Contests down at the State Fair and all kinds of stuff. And he managed, this is amazing. I was just talking to Carl about this recently. I, it never occurred to me. Hawaiian music had its heyday in the 30s. Somehow, all the way up into the 70s, way after rock and roll was gigantic, he was still getting kids to play Hawaiian steel guitar. I don't even know how that happened. That's kind of amazing. Um, but I know that for sure because I had ki kids that I was in junior high with in the mid-70s were taking steel guitar lessons from my father. Um, that's kind of amazing. So. Now when I meet people who study with him, they, they don't just talk about the music, of course. They talk about what a great guy he was and what a positive influence he was on their lives. And that's in spite of that cigar that he had in his mouth in the little teaching room. I don't even, what a horrible idea. <clears throat> but no, that's just the way it was. We should try that, Carl. <clears throat> you know? And, and they told me that not, if they don't play anymore, that it's still very important in their lives Maybe their son plays, their granddaughter plays. Sometimes the same instrument that they played on back in the 50s is still being used by somebody. Um, after most of us were grown, my mom joined my dad at the store. She was supposed to be the head salesperson. It's kind of, if you knew my mom, I'd like, what? <laughs> but really, she was an ambassador. She greeted everybody. She knew all the students' names. I was just talking to Carl about this also. 
basically their life story. She was a great listener, and she'd say, maybe that child has nobody else to talk to today, you know? She was amazing. She listened. Um, in fact, my mom could get the entire life story out of the lady at the checkout counter at the grocery store. I kid you not. She'd come out of the store, and she'd have the entire story. And she'd go, I don't know. I didn't ask. They just tell me. <laughs> I said, Ma, something's going on here. They just... But that's how she was. Everybody loved my mom because she was a great listener, and she was a very smart woman, too. And I, I think she actually knew more about my dad's students than he did a lot of times. He'd come home, and she'd start asking questions about a particular student. My dad was like, what? are you talking about? And she remembered every detail. And years later, she still knew all the details of these people's lives. She was amazing. Former students um, have told me, too, numerous times that talking to my mom before and after the lessons was just as important as taking the lesson from my, from my dad or for whoever else was at the store. So I want to thank my folks for passing that all on to this community and, and, and to this family, you know, because music is a giant gift that we receive every day, I feel. Um, like Alderman Seville said, a lot of the grandkids are musicians, great-grandkids great are becoming musicians. Um, as far as guitar, well, guitar or drum, I know everybody in the family knows that there's, there's free lessons waiting for them if they want them. So we've been teaching a lot of kids for a long time. Um, I want to read something just real quick here. This actually came yesterday. It was posted by a friend of ours, Dave Eno, because I think it says it very well. He says, so I'm going to date myself here. In 1973, my mom started, talking to, uh, started taking me to Hicks Music on the east side of Aurora for guitar lessons. I took from Nick Brown until he went off to Berkeley School of Music, if he remembers correctly, he says, which Nick Brown studied with my dad, which makes Dave my dad's grand student. That's, that's Carl's line, the grand student thing. I think it's a great idea because we have a lot of grand students here now because a lot of our former students are teachers here. Along the way, I've had a number of guitar students myself. The main point here is that I'm just a very small branch on the tree of guitar players that started out in the home of John Hicks, founder and original owner of Hicks Brothers Music. I don't know if we can count the number of musicians running around the Aurora area uh, that are part of this tree, but for sure it's in the thousands. So I, thanks, Dave. That's very nice. And I think it's true. Um, one last tiny little story. It's, it's, it's personal, but sorry. Um, I'm going to be 57, real close, real hurt near. A couple of, thank you. Sunday, thank you. <laughs> My sister goes, tomorrow. <laughs> Whatever. But here's the deal. I was born on a Saturday, and this was what my mother always said. Uh, she'd say, your dad told me I had to hurry up and have you so he could go play a gig. <laughs> Which she did, and he did. He went and played a gig uh, with my brother Peter, who's not here. He was nine years old. He played ukulele. They did a Hawaiian gig the night I was born. She was OK with that, apparently. I was the ninth kid. It was like, yeah, whatever, big deal, <laughs> right? And so that's my segue also to come to the Uke Fest on Sunday. It's going to be a great thing, right? That's the commercial. So uh, thanks, Mom and Dad. We, we, we love you, and you, we miss you a lot. What? <laughs> no, no. I'd like. No. <clears throat> That's my joke. Actually, what I have to say is is a shortened version of what you just heard. I'd like to thank Mike Seville and Gina Moga and anybody else who was responsible for uh, choosing to honor our parents in this way. I'd also like to thank my brother Eric, who, if not for him, I wouldn't be standing in front of a bunch of people today. Thanks. My most solid memories of my dad was when I was a little kid. Seeing him come home. <laughs> Shoot. Every weekday, about 4.20 from his day job at Caterpillar, eating dinner with us and then disappearing into our front living room, closing the pocket doors where he would give unsuspecting students music lessons on the steel guitar or the Spanish guitar which is what it was called, or the ukulele. We kids would see him only for a brief moment when he would step into our den while we watched TV. 
grab some music, then go back to his students. I could see that my dad clearly loved what he was doing. He continued to teach down the street in a rented building and then up the street in a brand new building where he gave lessons until he couldn't see anymore. Along the way, our mother supported him completely, never complaining about the long hours or the missed vacations. She worked at the store as well, on and off, um, making friends with every single person, young or old, who came in. She knew, more, she knew more about my students than I did because she was, besides being a good talker, she was a good listener. Together they made a great team and positively affected the lives of hundreds of people, young and old. When I see this sign, I think that it's a well-deserved honor. But more than that, I think it's just a symbol of the many happy memories our parents brought to so many people throughout the years. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Seville. I'm an alderman in the 6th Ward, and uh, I knew your folks uh, in 1965 and 1966 when I took uh, guitar lessons from John, and uh, the Hicks family has always had a special place in my memory and my heart because I'm friends with Mary Eileen, uh, and also now uh, friends with Carl and Andrew, and Eric approached me uh, with the idea of uh, naming a uh, street at having a dedication after your dad, and I thought it was a great idea and thought we should include your mom too. And I'm uh, happy to do this because the Hicks family means so much in the Fox Valley uh, area uh, with the, uh, their love of music, and they're passing it on to many, many other thousands of people throughout the Fox Valley, and I hope the tradition continues, and the Hicks is, is a great family in, in, in our community. So. Thanks for all you've done over the years. Hello, everybody out there. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Peter, you know what I think of you. <laughs> and now the end is near. And so I got to go here. Everybody was great here. The speeches were good. Um, it's, it's a really neat tribute. And um, I really don't have anything more to say. I think I've said way too much already. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm the eighth child. I uh, got no lessons, but I got the blood. I got the blood, so I use my mama's voice, and we sing to Jesus all the time, and we have a great time. So I thank my parents for everything, and I thank Eric for this wonderful day. It's been a joy. We get to be together. It's, it's just been a beautiful, fabulous experience that I'll never forget. 
I love you all. I love my brothers and sisters more than you'll ever know. I miss my mommy and daddy, and I thank them for everything. And I think that's all I'm supposed to say. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Andrew. I was one of the ones that spoke. Thanks for coming out to this exciting thing, all you people. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Eric, for getting it going. This was just a really exciting day. And uh, really, when you mentioned that this should be a possibility, I thought, that's never going to happen. So I'm really happy that you stuck with it and that you did this and that we had this great turnout today. And, um, you know, I probably have to go eat something now, but I'm going to try to get you, Eric, over here to speak. All right? All right. I can't believe the fake news is here. <laughs> I'm Eric Hicks. Um, they, everyone blames me for all of this, but it's not true. Everyone, um, everyone had a stake in it, I guess. Um, I really don't know what to say except for that. Uh, I have a great family and it's an honor and I, I want to thank the city of Aurora for running with this and uh, it's just, it's just wonderful. I understand this doesn't happen very often. Um, only a few times in the last 150 year history of the uh, city of Aurora. But uh, maybe it'll inspire people um, to uh, uh, do all they can and give back if they're in any way successful. And that's what mom and dad did. And that's really all I have to say. So, thanks again for this opportunity. Thanks much. Hi, I'm Andrea James. Um, my mom is Lucy Hicks, and my grandparents are John and Eileen. Um, and today is a pretty amazing day to be here at this amazing store that I grew up going to, um, to see them honored and their legacy and everything that they worked so hard for. Um, I feel a special kinship to this place and this family um, because I teach here now. I'm a voice teacher. I've been singing my whole life. I learned from my mom, who learned from my grandma. And um, I went to school for voice, and I have my master's, and um, I sing in professional choirs. Um, I teach piano lessons as well. And, um, and one of the best parts of my, my days, my weeks, my time here, living here back, in, back home, is working at Hicks Brothers. I get to work with my uncles um, a few times a week, and I have fantastic students, and I get to help live out the legacy um, that my grandparents started. And it's a, such an honor to be here. And I'm so proud. So thanks, Grandma and Grandpa. Yeah, I'm John Hicks. I'm the oldest of the 10 kids. Um, so I've been with them the longest. I watched all the things that everybody else talks about take place. Uh, I have, I'm married. I have six children. I, all of them are, t are studying music out west. And uh, I, write, I, I still teach out of my home in Sandwich. I teach in four nights a week. I have some students. I love teaching more today than I did when I started maybe 40 or 50 years ago. I, it's just something that grows on you. It's so wonderful watching people enjoy and understand what goes on to enrich their lives. Um, that's pretty much about it. Hi, I'm Celia. I'm number 10 of the 10. <laughs> Johnny's over there laughing at me. Hi, Peter. Am I supposed to be saying hi to Peter? I uh, just wanted to say hi to everybody. And all the other family members that couldn't be here today, it was a wonderful, wonderful ceremony. Uh, Carl and Andy were funny, hilarious, and also made us cry. Mom and Dad would just be so happy and so proud right now. I'm sure they're watching right now and just laughing at us. So it's been a wonderful day, and we're just going to go continue and have some more fun. Okay?
All right, thanks. Hi, hi, am I talking to whoever isn't here? I'm Mark, the third son, I mean the third child, the second son, and uh, we had a wonderful day here. A lot of people showed up for the dedication of the sign and uh, people we haven't seen for a while. And uh, it's certainly in, it's certainly a, a nice thing to be able to honor our mom and dad the 50 years. The dad taught, like my brother said, and uh, um, I, 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 uh, I couldn't be happier, couldn't be prouder of them. And so uh, it's just been a very nice event. Thanks. I'd like to thank the city and the representatives. And uh, of course, Eric was the catalyst behind this. And uh, that's about all I got to say. All right. Hi, kids. I'm not sure why I'm doing this. I think because um, everybody else got to, but we didn't get to come there and, and uh, enjoy that uh, day of honor, uh, our mom and dad. I would like to say just a few things. A, or number one, mom and dad taught us music. Mom? her show tunes and her classical stuff. Dad, for me anyway, hillbilly and Hawaiian, you know. Hey, good looking, what you got cooking on the night? Played that the other night, or last night, actually. Anyway, the second thing that Andrew talked about, and by the way, Andrew and Carl, you did a great job on hosting the thing. Um, it was really well put, everything you said, except for one detail when, Andrew, you mentioned there was, their dad wanted 12 kids. Well, there were 12 kids, but um, Mark ate one and I ate the other one. Hi, I'm Terry. I'm Eric's wife, and it's been exciting to be here today and see all the family. And um, I can't wait for the rest of the weekend for everybody to get together. I'm Tabitha Villa Gomez, and I am John and Sandy's firstborn. And I didn't know I was coming until I jumped in a car and got here. It was nearly magical. And it's so worth it. I'm so glad to be back and to see all the cute faces that I'm related to. And we miss all those that couldn't be here. And uh, yeah, super exciting stuff. Wait, your turn now. And I am Sandy Hicks, wife of John Hicks, who is the firstborn son of John and Eileen. And yes, this is Tabitha, our firstborn, and she came all the way from Utah and surprised the heck out of me. Scared me the bejeebers out of me last <laughs> night when she showed up in the dark. So anyway, yes, it's great fun to be here and we wish more people could have been here but we understand that you know life goes on and you have jobs and everything like that but let just want you to know that we're thinking about you and in in our hearts you're here with us Ina? hi I'm Ina Hicks I'm married to Mark um, I'm the first in-law so I want to get that in there That's all right. these others are later um, this has just been so good to see everybody again. We don't get together as often as we wish, but it's, it's so good to be here with everyone, and it's been a great day. And again, I'm looking forward to the weekend, too, because we got a lot more fun stuff coming up. Hello, I'm Maureen. I was Maureen Slaga before I met Andrew Hicks, my husband-to-be at DePaul University School of Music, and that's where we met. Uh, we got married, and then I was married into this wonderful, wonderful Hicks family of music. And our kids followed in that fashion. And um, it's just an amazing honor, really, what Jane and Eileen had done for the community, for their family, for their kids. And it's just an amazing thing to be part of it. And I'm just really proud. And um, just really proud. <laughs> OK. I'm so happy to be here for this occasion. Uh, John and Eileen uh, were part of my life. Uh, Eileen was so nice to me when I first even started coming to the store, and then when I started working here, she knew everything about me. Would talk to, would be just greet me warmly every day. It was, it was wonderful to have her as part of the the Hicks uh, family. Uh, and over the years, I've just gotten more and more involved with the with the store and the Hicks brothers. And uh, it's a great occasion. Congratulations! Uh, thank you so much to the city of Aurora for doing this. Uh, it's really appreciated.